All right. Uh, we're all about local here on the Morning Brew, and this gentleman is certainly that. Uh, it is gardening season to the max right now. And uh, the owner, proprietor, and busy guy over at Jericho Nursery is with us here today. Here he is, Rick Hobson. Hello, Rick. Hello, Larry. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good, Good morning. You. Good morning, Amber. You are such a wealth of, of information. It's nice to see you back before we came on camera and said, what stations am I listening to? I, I really enjoy listening. I was like, wow, that's, that was really cool. Well, you saved me. Uh, I've listened to you on KNKT. Thank you. On Saturday mornings. Every uh, Saturday. And at 8.30 a.m. Correct. And you're always so, you're like, okay, well, don't don't worry, but you do need to water your plants. It is. It might freeze this <laughs> evening, but you yeah. do still need to water. And so, you actually saved me um, from losing a lot of, my I, I know you're listening. I know you're not just making it up no, because no, no, those no. are actual advice. <laughs> we had I, a crazy season this year, didn't we? I have been right for 20 years with weather. Uh, Knock the, on wood. Yeah, well, no. I'll tell you why in just a second. For 20 years, I've been spot on. And my partner on the other radio program on KKOB, Jim Sice, state horticulturist, 70, yeah. 77 years old, state hort guy, 30 some years. Yeah. Says only fools and foreigners predict weather in Albuquerque, which is so accurate. Mm -hmm. So three springs ago, I'm like, we're going to freeze again, and we didn't. And we all got fruit. Everybody mm -hmm. remembers because we all got apricots and peaches and cherries, everything. So yeah. it was wrong then. Uh -huh. This year, I said, we're not going to freeze again. <laughs> and I think it was the latest frost I know of in Albuquerque. I've I mean, never seen it freeze I think so after too. Mother's Day. I still have one little peach. I covered, baby peach. I, I covered my tomatoes because I've had uh, I've had tomatoes in the ground since the middle of February. Wow. Have you really? Well, there's a thing called the wall of water. Uh -huh. It's a it's a little greenhouse thing. Yeah. that gives you a couple months. Gives you a buffer. You are, you almost have tomatoes in, don't you? I had a second time it's happened. BLTs, Cinco de Mayo, Did and you? the lettuce wow. and tomato were out of the garden. How hey, nice. Which is hard to do. Lettuce is early, that tomatoes is. are And that had to be the best BLT. Oh, yeah. That and, yeah, it was really oh, good. Oh, homegrown tomatoes are the best. Well, Rick, I, I'm really happy to see you because I have questions about the monarch butterflies. I was on the City of Albuquerque website uh, oh. yesterday, and there's actually a story on there that says, are we losing our monarch butterflies? And um, it turns out that a lot of people are using sprays to kill their weeds, uh -huh. and milkweed is one of the things that monarch baby caterpillars eat. Oh. And monarchs are, um, or butterflies in general, are some of the most important animals that pollinate the flowers. So with Rick being here, can you please tell us what are some really high nectar producing shrubs and flowers? And uh, I'm glad you prepped me for it before. Yeah. Yeah, he's the like, like, deer in the headlight. Oh, yeah, what's a monarch? What's a monarch? Is it blue? Is it orange? <laughs> Is it pink? <laughs> it's those really big, beautiful orange. I yeah. mean, you know, but in general, yeah. just I love to see. So, milkweed, insects. I sell the seed, uh, and it's in, I'm looking for the plant because people, people have, you're not the first to have heard and seen this story. Mm -hmm. So, I can't f seem to find the plant, but I'm looking forward to have the seed, and it's a very particular type mm -hmm. that attracts the monarchs. Dill. Oh, okay. Very, very good one because the same reason the adults lay the eggs and the then the caterpillar, the larva, eats the dill. Mm -hmm. There is a shrub called a butterfly bush, and it comes in pink and purple and white, and as it's named, butterfly bush, it attracts uh, butterflies. Uh -huh. And in my yard, I was, I've been noticing, we put in some cat mint. It's a little purple ground cover type thing, mm -hmm. loaded with bees and butterflies. That little white thing is mm -hmm. a cabbage looper, just full of critters. Cat mint. Cat mint. Okay. Cat mint and dill. Yeah, and butterfly bush. That's and that's butterfly me. bush. Yeah. Are they pretty drought tolerant, or is uh, that the, too much to ask? I, the, you you see the hesitation. Drought tolerant and me don't get along mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because I get stuck dealing with people that just don't know how to water. Mm -hmm. So yes, drought tolerant butterfly bushes. Dill mm -hmm. is not a heavy water mm -hmm. user. Where I think we're making the biggest strides in reducing water use as a community is in taking out high water use lawns. And mm -hmm. really, the city has, that's all that we're rebating and doing anymore. What we're doing, and finally we're talking about it, and I'm glad to hear that we're talking about it, we're taking out lawns and not watering our trees. And a uh, real scary uh, stat, and this is about the third or fourth time I've said it publicly, Albuquerque is the second in the nation 
we're losing trees. Mm -hmm. We're killing trees mm. because we're taking out lawns yeah, we're not and wanting. not supplementing the trees. Mm. So trees don't need as much as a lawn, but here, what do we do? Right. We take out the lawn, we cover with gravel, and we turn off the sprinklers. So you still got to water. Yeah. Uh, these plants, butterfly bush is considered a drought tolerant plant. Mm -hmm. Milkweed is a weed, it's a drought right. tolerant plant. Dill Can you believe we're talking about growing weeds? Yeah. This is how much the, in the, the, the change, the change yeah. in the yeah. times and the way we're thinking about, you know, preserving insects and what they mean to our ecosystem. Very true. I mean, I was fortunate enough or blessed enough last fall to be on the front page of the paper watering for the 30-year low in Albuquerque for water use. Well, that's a huge accomplishment for a community. It is. Especially 30 years of growth yeah. and added homes, and we're a 30-year low with the growth. But now we need to educate ourselves a little further. Right. Use some mulch, get some polymers in the soil, use some compost or peat moss. It'll hold that water because it's so precious to us. I do not want to live in Vegas or Phoenix. Mm -hmm. It's hot, dry, concrete desert. We live in Albuquerque because mm -hmm. it's right. high desert. Right. It's cool. Larry's in the store with his wife buying flowers and some good mm -hmm. stuff yeah. around the yard. We don't want that sterile look. No. And we can do it and still be very conscientious as a community. All right, personal story. We, fe we bought some flowers from... Uh, Jericho last year that were so cool and we didn't know what the name of them were so we go in and we describe and I think I was talking to your wife Jennifer and I said look it's like a little fuzzy flower on a stick mm -hmm. and she knew exactly what Just it was like that. Yeah. she's much smarter than I am by the way <laughs> but they grew great and then we got some more from you what guys what are they uh, do you remember gumfrini oh gumfrini yeah, yeah. They go oh, right those are beautiful. Here. Little yeah. clover like thing, purple yeah. on top of oh, them. Yeah, those they, are they really bloom pretty. all year and they just don't die. And, 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 and they propagate? Yeah. Okay. That's great. Oh, that so sounds awesome. So it's a fuzzy ball on a stick, basically. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I knew great, what you were talking about. Great yeah, description. Yeah. They did. That's, that's the kind of local knowledge that you get <laughs> over there. Also, we also got a couple of really strange but really cool plants for you. One's an Australian plant. Uh, it's a yellow flower. It looks weird looks like it's from the moon or something mm. and another one is called parrot's beak oh, and that's oh, growing so great cool. in our backyard yeah. so thanks for stocking that yes. glad to have it we, find, have, we have a little orphan like we found somewhere in here anyway um so we had late frost yes but uh you, you may have lost some plants i lost some dahlias and stuff uh going forward now we're going to head into some really warm weather uh what's the advice that you give Here's what I see all the time is I teach how to water and I teach over watering and then backing it off. Okay, and the easiest way to teach that is teaching lawns. All right, if you have a lawn in March, you start watering. I'm going to tell you 20 minutes three times a week. Right. Back it off to 17. Back it off to 15. Back it off to 13. When you get to oops, go back a minute and you're <laughs> using the exact amount of water you right. need because you and your neighbor may need different water. Yeah. Okay. When it gets really hot, you go and do it again. And where we really reduce our use is that bell curve is most people that aren't conserving or watching their water turn it on 30 minutes in March and leave it there till October. Uh -huh. Right. You bump it down. You gotta tweak it. You gotta tweak it. So when it gets hot next week, tweak it up and then back it down to oops again and know exactly what you're needing in water. Of course, as we talked about earlier, good soil amending. There's uh, plastic stuff, uh, ne the neck bands are cool bands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those can be put into soil to hold water, oh, and compost and peat moss hold water. And then once you get everything in and you're done, mulch. Now, the flower beds and stuff, you want to use pecan shell or cedar or cypress, something that's attractive. Mm -hmm. My vegetable garden, I use hay or straw. Really? It's not attractive, but I don't care. It's out in the backyard. I put three inches down. It keeps the moisture down. I'm able to water my vegetable garden three times a week for an hour. It's all on drip. Know how big your drippers are, most people don't. Uh -huh. no, everybody can tell me how often they water. Everybody can tell me how long. One in a hundred, not one in ten, one in a hundred when I ask them, how big is the dripper? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know, throw it in a bucket, run your system. Maybe it fills the water cup, maybe it fills the tray, but you need to know okay. how much water you're using. Interesting. I bet your property is really beautiful and 
lush. I always envision that you have this <laughs> paradise. Do you know what I mean? I always think the of it. Garden of Eden. Yeah. Sort of it's, what, it's a work in progress. I'm not quite the shoemaker's kids need shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it looks really good until we get to summer, and I'm so tired, I just let it all go, and it's weedy, and I don't care anymore. I'd rather be fishing. But I do, I'll do. i post some pictures on our Facebook page, because the greens right now are getting ready to pull because it's too hot. Uh, the, the chard and the spinach, oh, mm. it's just beautiful. Oh, that's neat. It's just a fun So bed. inspiring. Yeah, thank you. It's always fun to talk to you, Rick. Thanks for coming and Thank being you, on the Thank show today. Yeah. If you really want to buy local and get some super advice on your yard, go see Rick, Jennifer, the whole staff at Jericho Nursery. Uh, they will help you out. They get some great stuff. Our yard is better for it, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. As is mine. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Rick Hobson, everybody, owner of Jericho Nursery here in Albuquerque. We'll be back with more Morning Brew in just a moment.